fragrance of selfless love that has drawn the world into one family. The truth of an eternal message that has been revealed through every act and word. The fulfillment in service that has been taught by relentless sacrifice. The Lord's own life is indeed His message. Sai Ram, on this beautiful and bright sunny day, welcome to the seventh episode in our serial presentation entitled Message of the Lord. Just to remind you, the first two episodes were in the nature of an introduction to the life of Bhagwan Baba and thereafter we have been discussing various aspects of Swami's teachings. Last time we focused on the omnipresence of God in the entire universe. As I told you then, we may see many different and diverse objects as well as beings but from a spiritual point of view we must never forget that God is present in all entities both animate and inanimate. Following up from that, in the present episode, we wish to discuss two topics. The first of which is what Baba refers to as constant integrated awareness. There are three words here, constant, integrated and awareness. Each of them has a deep significance. Pragnanam Brahmanam. This in Veda is called Pragnana, awareness. Not awareness, constant integrated awareness. Constant integrated awareness. Awareness into Samanim and Pritigal, Madame Bavin Chavachan. You may consider ordinary. Kani, where the Mulu Chapin at twenty Yoka Chaitan Yamu? But that awareness of where the Mulu Chapin at twenty Yoka Chaitan Yakini? And the power of the awareness. Then constant integrated awareness. Is to be called constant integrated awareness. And it, it doesn't break anything. It won't break No joints. Constant. It exists constantly. It is present on all the periods of time. It has no distinction between the two. Nothing whatsoever. It has got, it has no three states. All periods of time are the truth is one and not two. In simple terms, what he meant was that one must see God in everything, everywhere, all the time. If, say, we see a galaxy through a telescope, after admiring it, we must not fail to realize that Swami is in the galaxy also. If we see a stone, we must realize that Swami is in the stone. In short, wherever we look and whatever we see, be it an ant or an elephant, we must realize that God is imminent in that being. If we keep on doing that, we would realize, as Swami often reminds us, that there is no place in the universe where God is not present. Indeed, the entire universe is only God and nothing but God. Achieving that realization is what constant integrated awareness is all about. Now you might ask, Why on earth should I worry about this constant integrated awareness that you are talking about? I am, I am a busy person and I have very important things to do. Okay, tell me, what benefits will I get out of this constant integrated awareness? What is there in it for me? Well, becoming aware of God's omnipresence and staying in that state of awareness all the time will certainly not increase your bank balance, fetch you awards and things like that. However, there is something far more precious that one can gain which is God's limitless grace and a quick reunion with Him after which it would be nothing but bliss all the time. So. There is something at the end of the rainbow, if that is what you want to know. Meanwhile, someone quite practical might argue. Yeah, I'm a businessman. I pray to God, I worship Him, I go to the temple, 
And now you're telling me I should see God in everything I do, including my clients, my customers? I make offerings to God. And I'm supposed to be making offerings, free offerings to my customers? Doesn't make sense to me. I've got a business to run here. I've got salaries to pay. It's just far too complicated for me to understand. Now that is a I very good point. Sorry. And let us see what Swami says about it. Baba's point is simple. And he essentially says, My dear fellow, you seem to be in a tearing hurry and do not pause even one second to think about what I am saying. Did I ask you to give anything free? Did I say, do not make profit? Now listen carefully to what I mean when I say, see God in every person. First ask yourself, what is God? The answer is simple. God is Satya, Dharma and Prema. Hence, do business with your client in a truthful and righteous manner. Which means, firstly, do not cheat and take him for a ride. You do not have to fall at the feet of the client or give anything free, but just do honest business. Make a profit by all means. The code of dharma allows you to do that, but do not gouge him for heaven's sake. Profits must be moderate and never excessive nor amount to exploitation. Free market advocates might tell you that price is what the market can bear, but that is not dharma. So you see, the practical implication of cultivating this constant integrated awareness or the CIA principle, if I may call it that, is that it would help us to perform actions keeping God in view, but in accord with the needs of the occasion. That is how one must live in this world reacting no doubt to short-term considerations but always keeping the long-term in view and long-term consideration means that the ultimate goal of life is to go back to God from whom we all have come there is a balance between the short and long-term objectives and I hope that is clear having discussed the CIA principle which is the first of the two topics that I wish to present in this episode let me turn to the second one. People sometimes ask, especially those undergoing great difficulty and pain, Oh God, why did you create this universe and put me in it? Fortunately for us, Swami has given the answer, which is, I separated myself from myself in order to love myself. Basically, Swami is saying that He created this universe and filled it with diversity that included both inanimate entities and animate beings, including humans. Why did God do all this? Because He wanted to stage a drama. What was the stage for this drama? The entire universe. Who were to be the actors? humans what about the rest well the inanimate entities were sort of props like the land the sea the mountains and so on what about the insects animals and so on they too had their own supporting roles at a basic level they all formed the precursor to the human species there was also a supplementary role for plants and animals. The plants provided food, the trees provided fruits and wood, and the cows provided milk and so forth, all for humans. Okay, all these were enabling provisions for humans who were supposed to be actors. But what about the script and the storyline? Here God was quite different from the usual playwrights. He simply said, Oh humans, you make up the dialogue as you go along, but there is one thing I want all of you to do, which is to love each other. Maybe you now understand what Swami meant by saying, I separated myself from myself in order to love myself. That essentially meant, I, the abstract and formless God, 
projected myself onto a lower plane made up of space and time, allowing diversity to manifest. I became immanent in all aspects of this diversity so that my love became embedded in every bit of the universe. In particular, I gave to each individual the infinite treasure of pure love. I then expected all humans to act in a loving and selfless manner towards each other. I did all this so that love, which is latent in the formless God, might become patent and manifest via humans with names and forms. So, maybe you now have some idea of why God created the universe. He did it so as to stage a drama with all of us humans playing the role of actors. There was no script or storyline and God gave us perfect freedom to take the play along as we wished. But he was clear about one thing he definitely wanted. He said, Dear humans, pure and selfless love must be the theme of whatever you do. And remember, that automatically implies that your thoughts, words and action must also be pure. What does that mean? It means that they must conform totally to Satya and Dharma. You cannot tell your brother or friend that you love him and then treat him. Not allowed. Understand? Now go ahead and let the play evolve while I sit back and enjoy myself. Interestingly enough, that is not how things worked out. The actors, that is us humans, forgot God's instructions and began acting and speaking as they wish, meaning they allowed selfishness, greed, desire, anger, etc. to creep in. With the result, the play began to get ruined. Worse still, humans began to have conflict, harm each other and so forth to such an extent that from time to time, God had to put in a personal appearance as an avatar to set things right and get the play back on track, so to speak. And that, by the way, is how Swami happens to be in our midst right now. Meaning that we have messed up the world so much that he feels we need his help. Teach me, O Swami, teach me, my Lord, that you are in me and I am in you. Let me remember with every breath I take that I am your child. But let us search our hearts and ask, do we feel that way? Swami often says, I give you what you want, interviews, rings, watches, etc. So that you would ask for what I have come to give. However, we hardly ever do that. And by the way, what is that Swami is so anxious to give us, but we are not too keen to receive? Atma Vidya or Knowledge of the Atma. This tele-serial is an attempt to offer in a simple manner the ABC of Atma Vidya. Why is this Atma Vidya so important? Why is Swami so keen about giving this to us? We have called attention to this earlier, but maybe it is worth repeating what has been mentioned before. Swami says, But we think of the body relationship. We consider it blissful. But it is not permanent. It's never permanent any time. Yes, my dear fellow, all that you can get from this world would be pleasure and pain in cycles. You want lasting happiness? That is called Ananda or bliss. Do you know the way to get it? Atma Vidya is the way to get it. All the knowledge of this world. One might be scholars with all MA and BA degrees. One may be rich enough. 
పుణమికీర్తిని గన్న పుణ్యులైన ఆయుర్ ఆరోగ్యము లనవల తమ్ముండి పరిపూర్ణ వాయు జపములు తపములు చేయచ్చు సాధన నేర్పు సాధులైన ఇవన్నీ బయట సంపాదించేటువంటి చదువులే all that we get from the outer world aithe ivi kuda manaku undalasindi of course it's also necessary laukik vidyalanta kuda nu laukik jeevithane sampadistundi the secular knowledge is to carry our living aatma gnanamu aatma tattvanu bodhistundi the knowledge of the self speaks of the self symbolizes it kanuka ee taati gnanam nu chadutiyu manam prayojanam ledhu therefore the physical knowledge is useless knowing that we are too lazy to seek atma vidya swami teaches the same lesson in another way which is most beautiful wonder what that is here it is bhajan bina sukh shanti nahi sare bhajan bina sukh shanti nahi hari bhajan bina sukh shanti nahi sare bhajan bina sukh shanti nahi hari naam bina Just think of how many hundreds of discourses Swami has given in public and private explaining Atma Vidya and all its aspects. Just think of how many times Swami has sung this bhajan for us. At least now we should introspect and ask ourselves whether we are paying attention to the deeper meaning of what Swami is telling us. And we should not forget that it is not every other day that God comes down in human form to be amongst us. The times we are living in are truly out of the ordinary. To be in Swami's presence and see him is a precious privilege. Students, to have the opportunity to listen to his discourse is a sure sign of his grace. To serve him is a blessing that simply must not be missed. And remember, service to man is service to God. So, we really do not have to try to push ourselves to serve the physical Swami. Once we realize this broader aspect of service to God, then it becomes much easier to think of God, to serve God and to please Him in various ways. The bottom line is simply this. Every human being is an embodied soul. unknown to itself this soul is engaged in a journey towards god in the early stages the individual is unaware of this and wanders somewhat aimlessly largely trying to find happiness in this world naturally this leads to all sorts of ups and downs slowly over many births the individual begins to wake up spiritually that is still from time to time the individual continues to lose his way as a result of which the graph of the spiritual evolution goes up and down rather like the stock market value eventually there is a transition after which the individual becomes a real pilgrim in quest of god and when the individual gets close enough to god the lord out of compassion extends his hand and pulls over the devotee the goal is finally reached and it is bliss thereafter maybe we can now think in terms of a take home lesson i would say the lesson is birth as a human puts the individual on the long road to achieving full awareness which swami refers to as constant integrated awareness in that state one may physically see diversity around but always tunes to the god immanent within once one learns to see god in everything everywhere all the time life becomes very different 
it becomes one endless communion with God in a variety of ways, all of which fill the person with bliss or ananda. That, more or less, is the end of the road, barring the shedding of the mortal coil. I think it has been a heavy meal today with a lot of things to ponder about. So maybe we can take a break for now and meet again tomorrow to discuss and resume further. Meanwhile, I do hope you're enjoying the series and also find it useful. Thank you for being with us and meet us again tomorrow for the next episode. Jai Sai Ram.